This is January the 14th, 2021. This is the work for American history. Well, let's go back and do a little backtracking. We know that Harrison and Cleveland are going to face off against each other in 1892. Harrison says, I am the president, you know what I have done. Cleveland is going to say, I was the president, you know what I have done. And neither candidate spoke too much about what they would do in the next four years. So we have to go with the X factor, the factor that neither one of them had thought about. And that's the Homestead Steel strike. Now Homestead Steel is located outside of Pittsburgh. And the workers are going to go out on strike. And at first the strike is very effective because those who were hired to take their place can't get in to take their place. But then Carnegie is going to call the governor of Pennsylvania. He's going to call the president of the United States. The National Guard is going to be called up and the National Guard will ensure that those who want to break the strike can go into the plant and take over the jobs of those who were on strike. I think you're going to find that throughout the Gilded Age, local, state, and even federal governments use their power to break up unions. Now here is the Homestead strike right here. Now last week we talked about the Haymarket Square that's located up here in Chicago. Now this is another use of the map for our quiz. Well here's new material. Many of the United States were opposed to unions because they were dominated by immigrants. We hear a lot about nativism. Nativism is the belief that American jobs for American people, that the immigrants were, cut, were stirring up all of the problems. Now nativism is something that we hear during times of trouble. We want to support our flag, right or wrong, we want to support our flag. Donald Trump said many times in, as he was running for president in 2016 that he was a nativist. <laughs> well, we know that Cleveland is going to run as a Democrat and Benjamin Harrison is going to run as a Republican. But now a third party has entered the candidate seat. And that's James B. Weaver. Now, the Alliance Movement are a group of farmers who want to see a new person, neither a Democrat or a Republican, in the White House. Many of the unions don't want to see a Republican or a Democrat in the White House. And they decide to back Weaver. Now, Weaver says he's a man of the people. And this is what we call a populist candidate. Now, Weaver had several ideas. Weaver called for the unlimited coinage of silver. Weaver had the support of the farmers. Weavers had the support of the union. Now the blue states are Mr. Harrison, the red states are Mr. Cleveland, and the green states are Mr. Weaver. Now notice there are some new states that have entered the union. Uh, the two Dakotas, Wyoming, Montana, if we look at the bottom pie chart, we will see that Cleveland is going to get the most votes. He's going to get 46% of the vote. But what I find interesting is the green. Weaver's going to get almost 10% of the vote, over a million votes. Now, <clears throat> if I was either a Democrat or a Republican, I would be asking myself, is Weaver hurting me? Or is Weaver hurting the other guy? If we look at the electoral votes, it's an easy victory for President Cleveland. Now, notice Cleveland wins the South. Every Democrat's going to win the South until 1964. But notice again, Cleveland will win his home state of New York. And this will assure Cleveland the election. Again, Notice the states that vote for Weaver. I think they're awfully important. Congress had passed the Sherman Silver Purchase Act at the end of Harrison's administration. But a panic had developed during this time period. And Cleveland is going to ask Congress 
to repeat, repeal the Sherman Silver Purchase Act. His hope was that if there was less silver and more, and the gold remained the same, that this would end the panic. We need to put in our notes that this did not work. One of the casualties of the panic was the Pullman Rail Car Company. Now, in those days, each railroad had Pullman Rail Cars. Now, Pullman Rail Cars are cars that are built where you can sit up all night in seats, or you can go and lay down on a bed, or you can go and get something to eat. They are specialized cars. Many tycoons are going to have their own Pullman rail car for their enjoyment. Well, the Pullman rail car workers who are from Chicago are going to go out on strike in 1893. The American Railroad Workers, another industrial union, will agree to join the strike. And almost all of the Great Plains is shut down because the men who work on the railroad will not go to work either. Now, the leader of the American Railroad Workers was Eugene Debs. Now, President Cleveland is going to call out the troops. President Cleveland is going to go to court and file an injunction. I think this is the first time we've ever used the injunction before. An injunction is a court order. And the court said that Debs had to order the strikers back to work or he, Debs, would be thrown in jail. Debs refused and Debs was thrown in jail. The courts then order the second in command and the second in the command refuses to do it. And soon the entire leadership of the American railroad workers is in jail. Debs is going to go to jail and when he comes out he's going to come out a socialist. Now a socialist is somebody who believes that governments should own certain key industries. And Debs advocated government ownership of the railroads. Now I have to tell you this is quite common in Europe. In Europe most of the transportation lines are owned by the European government. The socialist economy, the socialist ideas, are going to continue on into the 20th century. As the, nation, as the nation sank into a panic, Cleveland seemed powerless to do anything. Many in the nation were looking for Cleveland or someone to give us direction. What the nation did not know the only person who knew this was Cleveland, was Cleveland had cancer. Now, Cleveland felt on the top of his mouth with his tongue a rough, stop, a rough spot, and it troubled him. And Cleveland is going to go to his doctors, and his doctors are going to take a sample of the top of his mouth. They're going to send the sample off with a fictitious name, and when it comes back, Cleveland has cancer of the mouth. Now, Cleveland is going to say to the nation that he's going to go on vacation for several weeks, that he's going to cruise up and down the coastline of the United States. It is while Cleveland is on his yacht that a team of doctors is going to come and remove the cancer. Now, removing the cancer was only half of it. Now they have to put back in the roof of his mouth a type of substance that will allow Cleveland to speak. For over a month and a half, the nation did not hear, the nation did not see our president. Cleveland had said that he had decided to spend more time at a cabin, at a cabin in Maine. Now this here tells the story of Cleveland's secret surgery. Now, it is because of this that reporters today follow the every movement of a president. I know that several years ago, President Trump is going to make an unscheduled trip to Bethesda Naval Hospital. Now, he says he's, his press secretary says he's just there to continue some tests. But normally, when the president has tests, 
it is advertised well ahead of time. It is safe to say that the Cleveland administration the second time around was a bust. The Greenback Party was begun. Now the Greenback Party was a party that believed that all dollars should, be, should not be backed in specie, that they should be backed by our faith in the government. Now to bring this to the attention of the nation, a former Union General by the name of Jacob Coxey is going to call for a march on Congress. Now Coxey is going to lead Coxey's army, as it was called, from Ohio to Washington, D.C. Now as Coxey gets closer and closer to D.C., more and more people are joining him. This is the first time that a private citizen has called for a march on Washington, D.C. This will not be the last. This will not be the biggest by any stretch of the imagination. Well, Cleveland has won election, has lost election, and has won election. No president can ever say that. Cleveland decides to retire because of medical reasons. We know about the cancer. The nation did not. In 1896, there will be a new Democrat and a new Republican running for office. I think this would probably be a good place for us to stop. Now a reminder that tomorrow we're going to look at the 1896 election and then we're going to do a walkout worksheet. Now if you are not with us on Friday, remember you have to do the walkout worksheet. That one's going to go in the grade book. A reminder that tomorrow all of us have to turn in our dual credit material. Now, if you are not with us tomorrow, then you need to alert Ms. Tuesley to let her know that you have everything done and that you will turn it in the first day you get back.